like, run, boy. He ain't running. Bike, boy, bike. That's what I mean. I don't know his name. I don't want to call him Forrest, but I'm like, bike, moving. Get them legs to moving. The car is. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is My Twisted Life. I'm Poetry. I am bringing you tonight the first episode of Shots Fired, season one, episode one, season premiere. Oh my God, there was so much stuff to happen in this little time frame. Had too many damn commercial breaks for me. Um, I guess that's the bad thing about having it on regular network TV. It's a lot of damn commercial breaks. But there was so much packed in to this show that um, I forgot. To, I, somewhere, somewhere halfway through the thing, I stopped writing notes. <laughs> so I apologize. So let me see what we... Uh, the first two minutes, my TV was messing up. The signal was scrambling, whatever. So when it finally came in, the they were already down um, talking to Preston Terry and telling him that there was a shooting down in North Carolina and they needed um, a black attorney to go down there because the cop was black. So basically they're trying to like quelch any racial tensions and the best person for the job is to get a black man to convict a black man. They didn't want the good white folk down in North Carolina to be setting shit off, starting no riots um, that they would never call riots when there's white people doing it, let's be honest. <laughs> they didn't want them down there starting no riots. Um, so, he's with the Department of Justice and he gives this speech about, you know, he's there for justice and equality. And no matter who the culprit is, whether they're black or white, he's going to make sure that justice is served. Good job, Preston. Good job. Okay. So then we move on to, um, they move on to, um, Ash. Ash is the investigator, uh, who's investigating the, the crime. So basically like a cop almost. She's investigating to see who is at fault, right? So what they're showing her right now at home with her daughter and they're just having some mommy and me time. And, um, while they're sitting there and she's telling her, you know, I got to go away for a few days. I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. You know, but we're going to FaceTime the whole time I'm going to be gone. All right, cool. So while they're having this conversation, another she could roll up and she like, hey, it's time for you to go to bed. And Ash is like, um, you know, tonight, just give her an extra few minutes. She's like, well, her bedtime is 8.30. Well, give her a few more minutes. You know, she can stay up a little extra half an hour with me because, you know, I'm leaving, you know. I'm her mama. I want to spend some time with her. I'm about to roll out tomorrow. Give me a little extra time with my daughter. She say... You're not the one who got to wake her up and drag her out to bed in the morning. I'm the one that got to do that. You go to bed right now. Start getting your routine together right now. And I'm sitting here like, who the fuck talking to my kid like that? Because you know, she did make sure she said that she was the mommy. So I'm like, okay. She didn't look her mama. Who the fuck, bitch? No, you're not talking to my kid like that. So right when I said that, right, um, they cut to the scene. The girl is in the kitchen. And so now Nathan character. Ash rolls up into her and said, Bitch, if you ever holler at my motherfucking kid like that again, I'm going to give your ass a hysterectomy. Some shit along those lines. I was like, snatch it out of her. You better set her straight. Be talking to my motherfucking kid like that. You damn sure you talking to my kid like that in front of me, right? So, um, her dude rolls up and, um, or her ex dude rolls up and try to put her in check, put her out the house. Like, look her, we got this. Don't be coming up here trying to know, get all tough, rough, and rugged with my girl. Don't do that. And Ash is like, your girl know that you be thinking about me every time that you inside her? You know you still want this. You know you still want it. I see already Ash got a little sexual addiction. She, I don't know, trying to hide some pain with trying to screw. I'm like, why is you trying to smash this dude? Evidently, he got this bird up in the house checking your daughter like that. And now you like your whole thing is, you know you want me. You know you still want this. You know you still want this right here. You know you still want this. But, um, okay. So next they go to the um the airport. And they show um Stephen James' character, which is Pres Preston Terry. They show him uh, waiting on getting his bags. And Ash rolls up and like, hey, so you they, you they good old boy? And he looked like, what? She's like, you, you the attorney, right? You know, I'm your investigator. You just let me know how you want to handle this. I don't like to be as aggressive as you want me to be, boss. Because, you know, he's her boss. She's He's running the show. She's supposed to answer him. And he like, um, I just need you to do your job the right way. She's like, yeah, right. Okay. 
the fuck does that mean do my job the right way? You already know you can't play clean with dirty cops. You already know it. Trying to get my water in, y'all. Trying to get my water in, y'all. So they, um, uh, the, I guess, the mayor? I forgot who she was. Helen Hunt's character. I forgot who she was. She rolls up with um, her assistant, and they trying to get them all breached, uh, briefed, not breached, on what's going on in the situation. Like, yeah. And and Helen Hunt's character was like, yeah, I told you. I didn't, we don't want the, the rednecks down here riding up the Cracker Barrel, so <laughs> we need y'all here to keep y'all one step ahead of the game. And I don't like to be left out the loop, so I'm going to let you know that right now. Keep me in the know. So she got to be the mayor, or what have you. And um, I'm like, okay. So, so now I'm sitting back and just listening to how he talk and respond to them. He's like, you know, I'm from, I'm from down south. I'm from Virginia. And they just had this little good old back and forth. And he, he giving out his yes ma'ams and no ma'ams to her and everything. He already laying out his level of respect that he has for her. Maybe it's for authority. Maybe it's because she's white. I don't know. But some, but Ash sitting back there like, bruh, for real. <laughs> so, um. They go into the police station, and all you see is black men locked up, left and right. Black man here, black man there, black man here. They all incarcerated, and you're like, God dang it, man. So he steps back into the room, and um, Mac Wilds, little character, his name Joshua, he playing the cop. And uh, he's sitting back there, and he's like, I don't want to talk to y'all. You know, I don't want to talk to y'all without my union rep. So Sonata drop Ash. She drops a little, you know, story down on him about her, on her second day on the job. How she shot an unarmed person. Her partner froze up and, and screamed out there was a gun. She thought her life was in jeopardy. And she got off. And he like, you got off with that? He's like, yeah, I got off. Her boss got off too. Nothing happened to them. So he starts to open up to them about um, where they were at. It's supposed to be in this little area that's kind of like known for drugs. You know, if you see a white person over there, you know they over there for some drug activity. And, um, so she trying to get the story and, uh, oh, Preston, like, so what was the reason that you went over there? Was you just racially profiling them? That's the only reason why you're there? And I hear sitting here thinking, this is such a flip. That's exactly what happens to black people every day. That's what exactly what happened. But I see how the show is trying to do it. They trying to, they, that their intent was to make it a flip on purpose. So I'm like, okay. And, um, he like, well, if they found drugs, I... They suspected drugs and we found drugs. And he like, did you find the drugs after you shot them or before? Well, it was after, but you know, he didn't want to say that. So, um, Preston is like, already in his mind, y'all motherfuckers did something wrong. And Sanaya and them, they go out to the car. I keep calling her Sanaya. Ash, the character. She goes out to the car and she talks to him. She's like, bruh, I was getting ready to let him spill his life to me. And you come in here with this little rookie mistake and shut him down. You make him clam up. And now we can't get nothing out of him. And he was like, um, you know, you just do your job. She said, I can't do my job if you messing up how I do things. So let me tell you, from here on out, I'm going to be the one asking questions. And you just follow my lead. He said, Boop. no, remember who your boss. I don't work for you. You work for me. You follow my lead and my lead only. That's how this works. So they got a little tension between each other. So she uh, says to him something about sleeping with him. And he like, what? She was like, yeah, you, uh, I'm like, if, if so, I, every time she gets around, she, she's like throwing herself at me. And I just find that kind of odd. Okay, so they goes to this little neighborhood. They want to go interview the people in the, in the town. And um, first girl they roll up on, she's like, no, nah, I ain't seen nothing. I ain't heard nothing. Another guy came out. He said, y'all look for video? And she was like, uh, yeah. He said, well, yeah, I got that. Uh, <laughs> he got something on bootleg. I forgot what it was. And then she like real funny. Ash is talking like real common lingo for black folks. You know what? In a way, it's, she talking like Sanaa really talked it, I believe. Because I've like, heard her like hanging out with her friends and stuff like that on social media. Yeah, she being herself. Like, through and through right now. And, um, impression is like, the more, the more Ivy League type of brother. You know, that's how he is. So, he out here suited and booted and she out here in jeans and this, this casual way type of thing. So, um, a little homie rolled up on a, a bike and he like, look here. Uh, Y'all asking all the wrong damn questions. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. 
So he tried to, um, you know, butter up to the dude and get a little information out of him because his brother, his dude is wearing his brother's jersey. His brother plays football. And um, so they get a little back and forth about how he how he down and how he know, uh, just to try to get him to lighten up and make a connection with him and soften him up. But at this moment, when he's trying to get the brother to spill the means, the police roll up. They roll up. They didn't roll up through the neighborhood like they was doing a patrol. They rolled up to the entrance of the little hood and park. And look, everybody dispersed. So now Ash is looking like, well, who the fuck they here for? They here for us or they here for them? Who they trying to intimidate? I ain't intimidated and I ain't impressed. Okay. So, um, they go, I might be missing this up a little bit because I told you I got into the show and I forgot to keep writing my notes. Yeah. So, at some point, um, he has to go, Preston has to have, have to go have a press conference. And in his press conference, um, you, oh, he went to go talk to the mother, the mother who had got, uh, her son got killed. And the speech she gave was basically Mike Brown's mama, Von Derrick Meyer's mama, you know, all these mamas, that's what that speech was, uh, how she felt about nobody's out here looking for my son, he's just a t-shirt kind of guy, I had to go buy him a new suit, he was a good student, of course he's a college student, because you know, he has to be a college student, he couldn't just be a regular old teenager like our young men are, they're 16, 17 year old, but when they get to the media and they get killed by an officer, then all of a sudden they become grown ass men. He couldn't be one of them. He was a good college kid. Oh, you know. So they went to go talk to her. She knows she all her feels. You know, I feel a little something, something for her. I do. But I'm sitting here the whole time thinking, we go through this all the time. It's not that I'm less compassionate because we go through this all the time, but I'm saying we go through this all the motherfucking time. And um, so after that, he he go gives a speech, um, a press conference about what's going on and the status of the investigation. And you got um, my girl Aisha Hines out there, baby. She's the pastor in this one. I get a double dose of her today. I get to see her in this show. Then I get to see her underground a little bit, bit on. Um. But she's out here giving her little passionate speech. And oh, he's out here giving his little passionate speech. And he gave the good rah rah speech. Cause she's like, bro, what you here for? We got black men out here dying in the streets every day by the hands of the officer. And now when some white boy get killed, now they want to send in the cavalry. And he was like, Well, you know, the cavalry is her and the cavalry that's her is here to do justice. No by any means necessary, no matter if they black or they white. It don't matter if you black or white. That's how Preston was sounding up in there. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, good speech, bruh. But it's all pipe dreams when it comes to black people. That's how I'm feeling about that speech. And uh, so but everybody like, oh, damn, he gave a good little speech. So he got some different people looking at him. They went to go visit another family because of uh, the little boy on the bike. He went back um, to try to go talk. Oh, I'm out of place. He went back to go try to talk to the little young, the young dude on the bike because he thought he had, like, a hookup and the little boy pulled off and when he pulled off Preston got jumped I mean they jumped him and I was like why they jumping him so soon he ain't even did nothing yet he only came to one neighborhood on one day asked a couple questions and they jumped his ass so that was before the press conference and um but the little young boy the dude on the bike I don't know what his name is I apologize at this point he gave him um, a lady name that he should go talk to in the apartments and that's where he was heading so after his press conference um, they decided that they was going to go, uh, before the press conference, they decided they was going to go talk to this mother as well. And they went over there to the tours is what they call the area. It's supposed to be like a little poverty stricken place and a lot of gang activity going on up in that spot. So they go over there to talk to her and she thinking they coming to talk to her about her son, not about the white boy getting killed. And he like, oh, I saw something on my floor. I was like, Ooh, what the hell is that? And he like, what your son's murder didn't get, or his death didn't get investigated? And she was like, the cops came by her, told me to keep my motherfucking mouth quiet. If I didn't keep my mouth quiet, they was going to take my kid. They searched his room, and he the one that got killed. Searched his room and found some marijuana. Then they tried to pin that shit on me and told me if I say anything, that I was going to go to jail and I'm going to lose my kid. 
So, and she hadn't heard nothing else from them. Like I said, that's typical. I said this in another video. I can't remember what video I was. I think it was in Underground. We was talking about that. That we could get, we could be dying with the, the bullet in our head. And we called the police in a lot of black neighborhoods. And they thought they're going to do is take a police report on the phone. They ain't going to even show the hill up. So, yeah, her story is very familiar. Very familiar. Um, especially when you you ain't even got to be from the hood. Just be black half the time. And this is the type of situation that you're going to have when it comes to the cops a lot of times. So, um, so all of that happened before the press conference. So at the press conference, you know, everybody is looking at Preston like, oh, okay, you might not be too bad. You know, you, you know. Pastor, Pastor invited him over to the church. Come on to church on Sunday. We're going to have us a little session over there. And um, Ash was like, shit, did you mean half the shit that you said? He like, nah. mm, not really. They go out to have drinks and they have that conversation. And well, she was like, well, I'm kind of offended that uh, you thought I drink. But she really did. So she got the little alcohol in her. And it's during this time that she kind of like mentions again that uh, that she thought that he, that he was, uh, she tried to throw herself at him, kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of, and, um, he says that basically she need to apologize to him for thinking he was a coon, and I don't necessarily think he a coon, but, uh, he ain't all the way there, you know what I'm saying, he ain't all the way there, <laughs> He still got this false hood belief in the justice system like it's going to be a kumbaya moment with black people and the justice system. It's all going to come together for us one day. So right now, he don't. he's just looking at the facts like we, gonna, we ain't going to worry about the other case. We're going to worry about this one case we got in front of us, this white dude that got killed by a black man and see who is at fault. That's our only concern. Forget about all the other black people that possibly got killed by the same department that Ash wants to uncover. So, um... They having that little discussion, and she tells she said, well, okay, I'm going to apologize for thinking you was a cone. You may not be a cone, but let me apologize for you being gay, too, because I thought she was gay. He's like, what the hell made you think I was gay? She's like, because uh, you didn't want me. He's like, maybe you weren't my type. She said, Every, I'm everybody's type, boy. Stop playing. I'm everybody's type. So, um, I said, I might be mixing stuff up. I know Ash goes to have, like, a little conversation with, um, the officers of the law in that town. She invited them all out to drinks. And she basically, you know, part of the good old boys club at this moment. And but they look at her kind of suspect. They like, okay. You were kinda of like IAB, why are you investigating bad cops? She said, I'm just trying to get you know the end of the story. Who was at fault? It may not have been a cop, it may have been a kid. That's all I'm trying to do. And I was just looking for you, sir, the dude from True Blood. Um, the one who liked the sookie. I can't think of his name. I couldn't stand the show, so I can't remember his name. But the one who liked the sookie. Was it Bill? Vampire Bill? Whatever. So he, um, he's the cop. He's one of the cops. I think he was the lead officer that showed up to the scene. She questions him for a minute. And uh, they question her her situation about her uh, shooting an unarmed person. And why she out here trying to investigate people when she got off. You know, say she's just out here looking for, for the... The bad. She ain't trying to bring down no good cops. And he like, well, Mac, not Mac, <laughs> Mac Wilds, Joshua is a good cop. So they toast it on up. Yeah, here's the good cops. And then they get, she gets served. Her motherfucking boyfriend or ex-husband, Javier, serves her with some papers to keep her away from her damn daughter. I'm like, you gonna serve her in the middle of this whole, really right here in front of them. This is when you gonna serve her. You can bring her outside. Wait till you come outside. You had to serve in front of all these people. I was like, that's so fucked up. So all her credibility is just like shot out the window with them. It's like, hmm. She tried to save face, though. She tried to save face. So they, um, she talks to Javier on the phone. And he was like, you know, I just can't trust you. I don't trust you being around her. And I'm like, how the fuck you can't trust her? Your bitch was the one popping off talking about how she was going to snatch little, little, little mama up. Cause she wanted to spend the next 30 minutes up with her mama. And her mama checked her ass. But So now you can't trust her around her own daughter because of that situation. Boy, please. Maybe some more to that story that we don't know yet. But come on, Javier. Come on. 
So, anywho, um, then they go to Mac. Child. I'm gonna keep calling them Mac for a minute. I apologize. They go to Joshua. Um, and there's, oh, no, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. So, uh, they go to a dinner with Preston, Ash, and Preston's brother, Maceo. He's a football player, big chocolate brother. Mm. Chocolatey, chocolatey. And they get into an exchange of words, really about their difference of upbringing. Um, they said they came from like a, a bougie kind of household, so to speak, or maybe Preston's family was bougie, but Preston went to Ivy League and Maceo went to the hood as far as schools is concerned. But the way he looked at it, he the one that's the football player and he the one that got the house for mom and daddy, you know. He the one that went to Ivy League and what the fuck he doing? He done picked the wrong side of the fight to be on. And he like, Preston tell him, just because you tweet Black Lives Matter on your Instagram page or your Twitter page or your whatever page to your 400,000 followers don't mean, don't mean nothing. Bro, he say up 1.4 million. Oh, he said one something million. <laughs> he said one point something odd million. And uh, at least they know what side I'm on. And so now I'm like, well, they in Preston. What side are you on, boo? Preston leaves. He's like, I gotta go. I'm gonna bounce up out of here. Um, he left Ash there because Ash said that she wanted to finish her fifty dollar steak. I hear you, girl. What damn steak cost fifty dollars? I got a steak in the oven right now. What damn steak cost fifty dollars? But okay, yeah, I'm gonna eat my fifty dollar steak. And bro, like, you know, I'm taking her home, and I'm thinking, Ash trying to smash. Ash trying to smash. So, um, Preston leaves. He goes back to the hotel. He's taking a little bottle of wine with him, and. Who opens the door but the mayor's assistant? And I'm sitting here thinking, did Preston Ash just sit here and say that he waiting on his Michelle Obama? Somebody tweeted, well, maybe Preston thought Michelle was a uh, Hillary. I don't know which one it was, but yes, I'm like, so Preston hooking up with the with the white chica. I'm like, mm. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But it just happened right after um we were here having this conversation saying, what side are you on? So they kind of look kind of suspect. And then he telling uh, Ash that you ain't my type. He wasn't telling you were my type because you a hoe. Because that's what I think she is. But he was telling you ain't my type. And I guess the, his type ain't the browner skin. I guess not. Oh, well, well. Okay, Preston. But in the meantime, Sanai up there with uh, Preston's brother, Maceo. And he like, um, you know, I don't want to hit it. Because I think I kind of like you. And you look so broken. You look so sad in your eyes. I don't want to take advantage of that situation. And she like... You sound like a real bitch right now. <laughs> Dudes hate to be called bitches, baby. He was like, uh, all right. Y'all don't tap that ass. He tried to get, you know, in control of the situation. And Ash was just aggressive as fuck. She took over that whole little sex, sex thing. I wish I could have seen some, like, some back muscles or something on chocolate dirt. I wish I could have seen something. But that's okay. We're going to do this. Is, this is, this is family-friendly TV with a whole lot of damn commercials. So, um, she smashed the brother. You know, he smashed, uh, Hillary, because I don't know what her damn name is, <laughs> either. And, um, during the course of this, a video gets released of Joshua. And Joshua is saying, it's right after he got out of the academy, and Joshua is saying that, uh, somebody was asking him how he feel about, you no know, getting out of the academy. And he showed his badge and said, oh. Well, at least I got a license to kill these crackers now. Why he say that? O-M-G. My first thought, though, was not really like, oh, my God, why he say that? My first thought was, damn, your boy fucked you over. Like, whoever passed out that video, whoever gave up that video, y'all are ass. Like, for real? For real? Come on, man. So now... Joshua was all in trouble. It kind of like upset the case and everything. So now um, Preston and Ash got to come back together. And I'm like, hey, damn, man, damn. <laughs> and, but in the meantime, Preston uh, sees Ash. You know, she come back to the hotel. And he like, and he already know my brother hit it. He said, I just want to let you know that it didn't mean nothing to him. And she like, shit, it didn't mean nothing to me either. Cause, I mean, truly it did. She just wanted to hit it and quit it, and that's what she did. I'm like, okay, girl. Yeah, she has a sex problem. We're going to see this ride on out, these 10 episodes, I'm telling you. So, uh, they go back to the crib, and uh, went to Joshua's crib, and he's sitting there with the captain, and the cap, or the 
the captain. Yeah, the captain. He's sitting there with the captain, and the captain is like uh, telling him, you know, everything kind of all good at the office, kind of sort of sort of kind of, but we gonna need you to sit this one out for the rest of this investigation. Yeah, you know, so you can't you on temporary suspension or administrative leave or what have you. And Joshua was like, "What the fuck?" I it was back in the day. You know, I didn't mean it. Like I said, he said, how the guys feel? The guys like, man. I mean, you had something on your desk, like a little something on your desk. I can't remember what he said. I thought he said a bow, but that didn't make sense to me. I'm like, okay. I think at this moment, Joshua realizing that he more black than blue, baby. Yes, he is. He realized that he more black than blue at this very moment. Because now the officers of the law not on his team that much no more. Black up, black up, black up, black up. Remember that KRS one song? I'm telling you. Okay, so um, now we roll to the nitty gritty. Gets to the last final scene, and you see their bike just moving, moving, and you see a car chasing the dude, a little boy on the bike. He ain't a little boy; he a teenage, but chasing his butt on the bike, and I'm like, run, boy. He ain't running. Bike, boy, bike. That's what I mean. I don't know his name. I don't want to call him Forrest, but I'm like, bike, moving. Get them legs to moving. The car is getting around him and all through the street. And he gets off the bike and he takes a run and he dives and he dives underneath some bushes. And you see him underneath the bushes. He's breathing all extra hard. And I'm like, stop breathing. Stop breathing. And then he rolls to the credits. That's the end of this episode. So I think I covered everything. If I missed anything and you watched the episode, drop it on down in the comments. Let's talk about this show. Um, there's one thing that I did like, you know, I like the fact that they brought up Ferguson. Um, they said they didn't, basically they didn't want another Ferguson. And they, they brought up, uh, they did some, a lot of name drops on a lot of uh, black citizens who have been killed. Um, and being from St. Louis and we have been a part of the Ferguson protest and before and thereafter, you know, dealing with the crooked ass police in our city. Is some of the storyline just seems repetitive because I've lived through it or I've put myself through it or I've been through it or what have you. Not repetitive because this is something that's been told on TV. It's repetitive because I've actually lived through it. You know what I'm saying? So I do like I, I like the show. I will continue to watch. I hope y'all come back and watch again next week. Um, I will try to live tweet again next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Try to get this video up and get ready for Underground tonight, baby. All right, peace.